uh, like in 2014, so Christian from the Google research first, firstly uh, found the adversary example and used the, used the word intriguing property of the neural networks. And in the next two years, adversarial attacks extended to the, the multiple deep, deep neural network related tasks, uh, such as the image classification, uh, NLP, and the, the graph neural networks. And in 2018, an evaluation uh, of defense method was proposed and claimed that the most existing defense at that time were actually fake defense, since they were uh, like just playing with the so-called uh, obfuscated gradient. And also in the uh, 2018, Mandris group from the MIT firstly proposed the uh, 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 adversarial training, which is still a very convinced defense method so far. And the community also paid attention uh, from digital world attack to the physical attack. So in, then in the 2019 and the, the last layer, so more and more researchers studied on the uh, robust AI and explainable AI, and also the uh, some uh, certification problem, which is the guaranteed defense or ver verification method in the mathematical way. Okay, so after a very uh, brief, brief background of the trustworthy machine learning, uh, in this talk, I will uh, present the three parts of my research works. So the first one is the a physical world adversary attack, which we will design an adversary teacher to help us against the, the, the object detection system. And the second one, uh, we will move forward to the connection between the ex explainable AI and the robust AI. And finally, we will uh, land on the theoretical guarantee in the perturbation analysis, which is also namely a uh, formal robustness verification. Okay, so uh, given this image, uh, if you like human label it, so I think uh, most people will, will say ostrich. So I, I seem as you are well trained AI models. However, how about this one? So I, AI model will say it is a unicycle. And I'll, I'll, assure you, I'll assure you that they are actually different, but the differences cannot be notified, not, uh, noticed by, by, by human eyes. And also it may be only a few pixels change or the, or the magnitude of the total perturbation are too small. And we call such images as the adversary examples. Okay, then how to generate such uh, adversary examples? So give you an example here of the uh, image, image classifier, for instance. So we feed in an input and also we get the output with the label. Uh, which is the uh, French Bulldog in this case. So we start from the so-called white box attack setting, which means the neural network conf conf configuration is totally transparent. And we can easily do the by propagation and by calculating the gradient with respect to another target label. For example, if we want to attack the, the French Bulldog to the basketball, we just fit in the target label basketball here and do the uh, by propagation to analyze uh, so which pixels in this input are most, most sensitivity and change it according to the gradient. However, in the real world, the white box setting may not be very realistic. So I will also introduce the black box setting. So which means the neural network configuration is unknown. And what, can, what we can only do is curate the model. So we can fit in different inputs and get different outputs so the attacking problem actually can be uh, convert to a, a zeroth order optimization problem. So just want to uh, want to know, even in this very restricted setting, we can still perform adversarial attack by using the, the gradient estimation in zeroth order. Okay, so by using such basic knowledge, can we really do the adversarial attack in the real world? So there is a paper from a uh, CVPR 2027 workshop that claimed that uh, there is no need to worry about adversary example in object detection in the uh, autonomous vehicles. So the authors only naively printed out some adversary examples as we can see uh, in the surrounding, surrounding images generated in digital world by using such as the 
uh, first send attack or LB FGS attacks. So they printed them out here and then captured again by a camera. And it is not surprising that the adversary example are invalid in this setting because we can see there is a clearly information lost in the print, printing and recapture processing. But it, it at least demonstrates one thing. The adversary example is also very fragile and some transformations on it may cause the adversary example become invalidation. Okay, so in the next couple of years, a very famous attack again is to an object detector by adding some stickers on the stop sign can fool the uh, object detectors very well. So actually not only the object detector, here is, an, here is another example to attack the face recognition system. So people wearing such uh, adversarial gla glass frames can also lead the face recognition system to classify you as an, another superstar. So as long as she or he is in the data set. Okay, so then how to generate such uh, powerful real world adversary examples? So there is a way to uh, use the expectation over transformation. So the framework is uh, sum summarized in the, in the objective function, which aims to find a perturbation delta here. And the first part is a, a perturbation constraint. So that tries to uh, minimize the perturbation level. And also, uh, uh, we, they need to sample a, a victim data set, uh, like the stop sign in the here in the different angles and distance and brightness. And also such, tra such transformation need to be predefined as the TI here in this function. So because we need to add the, the delta on different XI, which means the different uh, images from the victim data set. So if the XI changes, like the FI is in the different angles, then we, then we have, to, have to perform a similar transformation on the delta to align the delta to the, in the same image. So that's the reason we need to predefine the TI here. And the Y star here is a, a, a target label. And F is the, the object detectors or other targeted neural networks. And J function is just the, could, could still be the loss function like the cross entropy lost you use during the training. Uh, but this time we fit in the, because we fit in the wrong label, the Y star here, which is the target label, like a, a desk or an apple, whatever you want. So this objective function aims to optimize the delta. Uh, so not to the model parameters compared with the traditional training. So that's the key point. So we can finally build a powerful adversary examples. Looks like this here. So which is also uh, valid in the uh, different scenarios. But there are some drawbacks if you want to uh, design an adversarial t-shirt by using the conventional uh, expectation over transformation system. So first, the, the predefined transformation are very label consuming, right? Uh, and second is that the t-shirt is actually a soft and non-rigid object that uh, a fan transformation cannot represent very well. Because the, in the back here, this is, we call this such transformation as a fan transformation a different ang angle change and distance. But here we can see uh, there is a, a, a clearly a non-rigid uh, crawling deformation happen on the t-shirt. We can observe it by see the uh, different uh, uh, angle points here. And fortunately, uh, we found that the simply explained transformation, which is the TPS, uh, can help us solve this problem. So TPS solve actually solve a regression problem, which determine the parameters data here with, re with respect to the ankle points matching, which is the P here. And the, the, the final simulation result uh, can be achieved by the uh, interpolation, since the TPS is not actually uh, uniformly continuously. So the TPS is, TPS is actually also not a new method, uh, but the solution of this regression problem need, need to do a matrix inversion uh, during solving this regression problem. And it have the time com complexity as the ON cubic. So it is much more complex than the affine transformation. But the lucky thing is that the recent GPU-based deep learning frameworks like the PyTorch and TensorFlow can extremely accelerate this procedure. 
so we can finally utilize the G TPS and the GPU power, so without too much time consuming during the attacking. And the label point matching can be obtained by a tool like here to extract the, the intersection point on the checkerboard. Okay. And besides the, the, the shape transformation, so the color change are also very distinct here. So the, that's the previously work use a non-printability score, we also call it NPS, to manually sample only uh, around uh, 30 colors by calculating the different difference between the digital color and the printed out colors in the color map here. But in our case, we learn a, a polynomial regression from the digital color map A to the printed out color map B. And our learned result is shown, shown in C. So because our method is totally differentiable and easy to uh, plug into the objective function, so uh, uh, compare with the traditional NPS, it, it, it is actually a soft constraint, but our method will be more friendly to uh, build the adversary examples. And besides the this color transformation, we also added like the brightness, uh, contrast, and also random noise and the blurry on the input images. So the final <laughs> adversarial uh, pattern looks like this. So the generated adversarial patch will be uh, converted in digital world, like, like some examples here. But I think they are looks much more like a real world image. So as we can see the simulation result here, like here has the very, very obviously crawling deformation and also align very well when the person is at the different angles and distance. So also, also there are some uh, physical world results. So as we can see uh, in, a, in the video, uh, the red person who wearing our adversarial t-shirt cannot be uh, detected at most frames. And if we compare our uh, real world results with the uh, simulation results here, so they are very close. That's thanks to the, our uh, delicated uh, transformation systems. Okay. And okay, so then after uh, some introduction on the attacking method, so uh, is there any questions so far? So, so if, if not, I will move to the uh, another section. Okay, uh, then, then I will explain some uh, relationship between the uh, expandable AI and the robust AI. So first, there are uh, two questions. Uh, why do we need to explain AI? So imagine we have a problem and when we cannot explain the decisions made by AI. And in, in that case, it is very crucial to know the factors that lead to the specific decision, because we will, we will then uh, therefore be able to uh, audit or challenge the decisions or work to improve the factors that lead to such uh, uh, specific decisions. And the next question is that, why can we explain AI starting from analyzing the adversarial examples? So as I said before, when we cannot explain the decision made by AI, we particularly desire the reason. So the, the point is compare with the reason why it works so well. So well, we actually more care about why it works not well, or uh, like here, why it works so unstable. And the uh, adversarial example are the cases that the neural networks are works well. And so if we can explain, it may help us to improve the neural networks. Okay, so let's start with some uh, existing attacks. So if we want to attack this, uh, the, 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 the hypocompass to a label street car. So the heat map here uh, represents the magnitude of the perturbation generated by different attacks. The, the darker color means the value is larger and the yellow color means the value is smaller. So the motivation is that to find a, a universal rule and also, sorry, and also how to interpret such different perturbation patterns. So it is very popular to use a tool called class activation map. We also call it CAM to help us identify or localize the class specific most discriminative regions. 
So uh, like this example, there are actually two objects in this input image, both temple and the buckets be there. But because we know the classifier can only output one label, so so far we call it T0, which is our true label, uh, which is the both temple here. However, if we do some adversarial attack by using the target label buckets, then we can see in the heat map. So the, the Boston Bull region here and here will become surprised. We can see the heat map become, a, become lighter. And also the, 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 the budget, the, the, sorry, the bucket region here and here uh, become promoted. And so if there exists some uh, discri discriminative region for neural networks, so can we utilize it to find adversarial examples with minimally perturbation regions? So can we find a more effective adversarial example? Okay, so the key idea is to uh, impose the, the group sparsity, like a, a demo, like an uh, example here. So we use the L2 norm to penalize the group, group, of, group of pixels together. Like here, we have the four different group, groupies, groups. And then we formulate the uh, opt optimization problem as the objective function here. So the goal is, is seem still need to find the perturbation delta here and also added on the original input x0 with the, tar with the target label t here. So the first term is still uh, the attack loss, which can be the uh, cross entropy loss you use during the training. But uh, similar here, we fit in a target label so that different with your training. Uh, so we, we must have given another label compared with your true label. And the second term is the overall L1 or L2 distortion of the delta here. So this term help us to minimize the, 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 the whole level of the perturbation magnitude. We want to them as small as possible. And the third term is the group, group, group sparsity as I introduced before. It actually minimized the group of L2 norm in the in the each square. And next, uh, this is some constraint. And this constraint is the pixel level distortion. So we, we, we must, uh, we have a hard constraint of the L infinity of the delta, which means the, the maximum value we can change the, on the input image cannot be greater than the epsilon here. And last, because the, we know the X0 plus delta, which is, which is our adversarial example, could still be a valid image. So there is a bounded box for our final outputs. So that's, that's form up our uh, objective function. And then we can uh, reformulate the, so first uh, I would say that, so this problem is uh, not easy to, uh, to optimize because it contain uh, different parts. Like this is the uh, differentiable loss. And uh, the second part is the non-smoothing regularizer, which is actually some soft constraints. And also there are some hard constraints. We we'll call it C here. So the challenge is that we we'll how to optimize object, objective function with smooth and non-smooth composite optimization. And also there are multiple constraints with both hard and soft constraints. So this, this time we introduce a method called uh, alternating direction method of multipliers. We usually call it ADMM to split the original problem in, 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 in different stages and terms. So here we reformulate the problem by converting the hard constraint uh, to an indicator, which is the IC here. So if the W, W actually also have a hard constraint uh, to let it equal to delta. So if the W satisfies the constraint, then the IC uh, would be zero, and other, otherwise it, it is infinity. And we also use three more variables, Z, Y, W here, to split the uh, original problem to different parts, but the constraint, but also constrained by the three equations here. So these two formulations are actually uh, equal, but we, we, by, you, by introduce uh, the three more variable, we can convert them to, to, to this, can, this op optimizable objective function. So we first uh, de derive the augmented Lagrangian function of the primal problem uh, and introduce the three more dual variables, U, V, S here. So uh, they are actually used to control the distance between the uh, delta and the ZYW. You can see this term, this term, and this term. 
So then the Lagrangian function can be solved by uh, different steps, which is the we call it the uh, z, uh, we call it the uh, uh, sorry the delta step, zyw step step, and the new step here. So uh, the first term, which actually is it, 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 which is the delta step, is differentiable and free to optimize because in this step we treat the the other variables as constant. And in the first order, we just need to do the gradient descent. And in the zeroth order, we can also perform the, the gradient estimation, which means we do not need to know the detail of the f, func f function, uh, which is the, 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 the image classifier here. And also, then we can solve the zyw step. And they, all of them have, a, ha have the closed form solution. Because in this term, in this time, this step, we treat the delta as a constant. And finally, we just need to do the do updates to control the distance between the zyw. Sorry. And we call this, uh, this algorithm as the structured attack because we, we believe by utilizing the group sparsity, which is a group lasso, we can help us to uh, extract some discriminative region of the input and, and to see whether there are some structures uh, behind the adversarial perturbations. So, these are some results by using our uh, structured attack and uh, compare with the CNW attack. So CNW attack is also a very state of the art uh, adversarial attack method. Uh, as we can see, our method only need to attack a very small region like here. Uh, and the interesting is that the region also uh, fit the, the, the disc discriminative region extracted by the CAM. So like the, the Boston bull part and the bucket part here. And here is another example. The CNW attack also uh, still attack most regions like here, but our attacks uh, only attack the legs of the ostrich, and also gives the reason so why it looks like a unicycle. Okay, and here are some uh, quantitative results. So as we can see, so our structure attack can achieve very similar uh, L1, L2, and L infinity norm of the perturbation but with much more lower uh, L0 norm, which means the perturbation pixels are very less, which also demonstrates the effectiveness of the structured attack. And also, when we go deeper to analyze the sensitivity of different concept that adversarial attack with re respect to different layers of a neural network. So it shows that in all layers, the, the texture of the image are very, are very sensitive. So like, like we can see in this, uh, in, in this plot, there are uh, different type of, type of concepts that we can analyze during the uh, different layers. There are color, texture, material, parts, object, and scenes. And we can see the, the texture is a plot as the orange color. And in all layers, there are the texture, texture is very sensitivity. But the object, which is actually the shape of the object, which is the pupil color here, only sensitive at, at the deeper layer. Okay, so so please keep in mind of, of this uh, uh, conclusion, because in the uh, ACLIAR 2019, there was another paper also pointed out this phenomenon. Uh, like there are five different style, uh, styles of a tabby cat. So human and four different deep neural networks label it correctly. So here we, we show the, the accuracy of human classification result as the the, the, the red beans here. And the other four beans are actually uh, four different types of uh, deep neural networks. And human and all four deep neural networks label the, the cat correctly. And also in both original uh, image and the, the grayscale image. However, in the, in the, the silhouette and the edges style can only be uh, recognized by human very well. We can see human, and if it, uh, we're only giving uh, this salivate uh, image. Human can also label it with the 75% uh, accuracy. But if we're giving the age, human can give it, give you 87% uh, accuracy. But all of the deep neural network can give you can only give you a very low uh, uh, accuracy of this uh, tabby cat. And also, there is a more interesting part for the text for the texture still. So we can see 90% of humans still think it is a tabby cat given this uh, texture image. 
but all the deep neural networks can recognize it as an Indian elephant. So, so that means the textual features dominates the results of the deep neural networks. And that also provide a future research direction uh, on improving the robustness of AI. And also I would like to uh, mention a very recent paper from Mandry's group at MIT. So, so they claim that, sorry, they claim that the adversarial example are not bugs and there are features. And they said uh, there are some uh, non-robust features that are captured by the neural networks that cannot be explained by human. But we cannot just say they are useless or only decrease the robustness, like the texture uh, features here. Because such non-robust features also uh, participate the, in the classification process and play a non-trivial role. So recently, uh, DeepMind announced a very famous news that they uh, develop an alpha fold to predict the, 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 the potent structures. So this problem is actually very significant in the biomedical field and also has been studied in around uh, 50 years. So the alpha fold beats the all existing models and achieves unbelievable 15% uh, improvement. And some explainable AI researchers works uh, thinks, thinks that the key point is the non-robust feature that human cannot Im imagine because uh, they said there are some very weak signals distribu distributed on the complex peptide chains. And I think because people usually paid too much attention to the, to the vision project, so that's it, that, that is actually an understandable task for humans. However, such as the potent, fold, pot, potent folding, so if human cannot understand, then the true features may not be visible for, for humans. So that is also significant for researchers on the robust AI and ex ex explainable AI. Okay. So uh, before we move to uh, next part, so is there any question about the ex explainable AI and the robust AI? Okay. Uh, so we can uh, finally land on, land on the, uh, the theoretical guarantee and perturbation analysis and we usually call it a, a certification problem or verification problem. Okay, so give this uh, natural image ostrich again. And this time we aim to, uh, this time we assume that there is a, a 2D, uh, the ostrich is actually in a 2D example, and there are three uh, decision boundaries here. So if the data point is located in the boundaries, like here, then it will be, uh, classified as the ostrich. And definitely the adversarial examples are out of the boundaries because uh, it has a different label as, as one example here is a one Q. So as we can see, there is a range that con containing uh, the delta that minimal uh, means the minimum adversarial distortion. So because the real bond is actually the real, the, the real decision boundary is actually irregular. So we can draw a circle here to indicate the, the L2 norm of the possible perturbations. And we can claim that under, sorry, under the delta, uh, the area on, in, the del, in, the, in this uh, black circle already been, uh, sorry. So any data point in this black circle will definitely be labeled as the ostrich because there are the, 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 the data points in, in the black circle also uh, located in the three decision boundaries. However, how to find the area of the delta already been proved that is an NP hard problem. So sometimes for saving time, we can find the area which is smaller than the delta range. Uh, we, call, we call the green area as the certified robustness, which is actually one lower bound uh, on the perturbation uh, so that any perturbation within the green region can also cannot cause misclassification. So how to find the green area as larger as possible is our main task. And ideally we hope we, we can find the green area uh, which, which can reach the, the, the delta. But just to keep in mind that uh, uh, we, we call the, the way to optimal the delta as the complete verification. And instead we call the, call the way to find the green, the green area called incomplete verification because the complete verification need you to find the 
optimize the delta, which is the largest delta, and the incomplete verification just need to find the lower bound of, of the delta, but we still want it as large as possible. Okay, then we can start on a, a very simple uh, binary classification case with a three-layer neural network to show how to do the incomplete verification by the relaxation-based method. And then I will extend it to the complete verification. So as you can see, the weights of the three layers are W1, W2, and W3. And also there are two activation layers follow, followed by the two hidden layers. Uh, and FX here actually can be formulated by this equation. And if the input is a one data point here, then we know the output is just a number. And the rule of the binary classification is very simple. So if the FX greater than zero, then X is the positive example and vice versa. But if this time the input is a set of S, so which could be a L2 ball, the perturbation of this X, then this time the output will become a range because we can fit in the different, actually there are unlimited data points in, in this uh, set. So we can finally get a variance different outputs. But for the variance different outputs, they are also have a lower bound and upper bound. And we call it the FL star and FU star. So if we can see the FL star is also still greater than zero, which means the worst case of the set as is still greater than zero. So which means there is no LSR example can be found in the, in the set of S. So this is a very, that's a very uh, important uh, concept. Which it, so in other words, if the lower bound is greater than zero, which means the, the whole data points in the perturbation set is safe. So the problem can be uh, formulated by this uh, function. We want to uh, find, uh, we want to minimize the fx uh, given the x in the perturbation set s. And also, as I mentioned before, uh, there are actually uh, two branches of the verification. So the complete verification aims to find the fl star, which is here, accurately. And it's already been pro proved that it is an MP hard problem. And on the other side, we can find the lower bound of, of, of FL star. And we can still claim that uh, at least in a smaller range of the smaller range of the data point is also safe. And we, we call this as incomplete verification. So like here, the FL is the lower bound of the idea lower bound FL star. Okay. So if there are no non-linear non operations like the ReLU here, so all the weights actually can be uh, multiplied together as a uh, uh, simplified as the A here. So the, the bounds of a linear function are very easy to obtain. However, there are always some uh, activation function in the neural networks. So we have to do some uh, relaxation in order to find the linear representation of the neural network. And ideally, uh, uh, we use two linear upper and lower bounds to replace the uh, nonlinear units and relaxation depends on the input bounds and uh, uh, for the nonlinear functions. Like th this is the example of ReLU, tenderish and the exponential function. And actually we do need to care about the bound outside the, the L and the U, uh, which is the uh, two dash line here, uh, because there is no valid data will be there. So we just need to uh, relax this uh, such nonlinear function with, with these two uh, uh, dash lines. Okay. And also sometimes if we have, we have uh, like high dimensional uh, nonlinear functions, which have multiple, multiple inputs and all of them are perturbed, like the matrix multiplication, there are two perturbed inputs, X and Y. So this time the bounds uh, will be the actually two hyperplans instead of the two linear functions. Uh, like the, the pupil hyperplan and the, the brown hyperplans showing here. Okay. And finally, we can achieve the upper, upper bounds by the linear functions as AX plus B. So then I will introduce an existing tightest relaxation based method called Cron. So in Cron, we always maintain the, 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 the linear lower and upper bounds for outputs neuron with respect, with respect to hidden layers. A hidden neurons or inputs. Like if we start from the last layer, we only need to know the range of the last second layer. 
and then we maintain and propagate the bonds layer by layer in a backward manner. So here is an example. The HI here is the, we call it pre-activation value of the layer I, and the GI is the post-activation value of the layer I. So we start from the last layer. So it could be uh, super easy uh, if we already know the output range of the H3. So the, the bond can be represented as this formulation. But because we know that the H3 is uh, equal to the uh, W3 times G2, so we can replace the, re the H3. And here we, we got our first A matrix. So the A matrix indicates the, the, the linear bond relationship between the FX and all other nodes. So the A matrix is the key point indicating the linear coefficient, the linear coefficient that we are aim to find it during the whole way. So like if we continue, go through a nonlinear layer. So this times because we meet a ReLU layer, so we need to do some relaxation. As I mentioned before, we can use two, uh, two linear, uh, two, two line to convert the nonlinear function to the linear function. So we combine the relaxation linear function with our previously linear function to the new matrix A3 here. And then if you go to an, another linear layer again, so this time is similar to the last layer, we just replace the, 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 the W2 to uh, just replace the H2 to, to the W2 times J1. Okay. And then we almost, uh, then we meet another nonlinear function and we need to perform the relaxation to go to the A2 here. And almost there, there is another linear function and simply, we just simply multiply the weights with the A matrix. And finally, finally, we can reach the goal. We can obtain the, this very complex uh, formulation. But because we know they are, all, all of them are just a matrix multiplication, so we can combine, combine them together as the A function here. So we obtain the, the ALX plus BL for the lower bound of the FX, and also got the AU uh, times X plus BU for the upper, upper bound of the FX. So the conclusion is that uh, the a fit forward neural network outputs can be bounded by two linear hyper, hyper plans with very efficiently uh, com, uh, uh, computational cost. But after we get the uh, linear formulation of the complex function, we also need to concretize the bound with respect to the input range. So it's very intuitive in this 2D example, right? If we already know the AUX plus BU and ALX plus BL, of the FX, we just need to uh, find the data point in the set S here and here and introduce the, 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 the coordinates here, uh, uh, introduce them to the FL and FU respectively to get these two points. But if we're using the LP norm of the bond, then the concretization also can be uh, computed in a closed form solution by using the holding inequality. So we just need to replace the P norm to the Q norm here. And P and Q should satisfy this equation. Okay. And, but there are some drawbacks of the crop. So first, it's really hard to understand and it's not friendly to the people outside the formal robustness verification field. And the second is that uh, how to derive the, the, the bond in some very complex uh, network structures. So because we know the fit, new, fit forward neural networks is very easy, but how about the LSTM, transformer, ResNet, or even the graph neural networks? Uh, they already have some skip, skip connection. So we cannot easily do the uh, uh, derivative bond when, when they are actually uh, you know, so many you know, complex model structures. And also it's very hard to implement because when we uh, want to uh, build the formulation for a new type of network, we need to re-derive and re-implement the formulation as I introduced before. So we generalize the Cron to uh, LIARPA. So LIARPA is the, means the linear relaxation based, based perturbation analysis framework. And we treated the neural networks as a computational graph, and we do not need to care about the structures. So because our method will works like a deep first search, the DFS, to go over all the nodes and propagate the bonds along the way. So we aim to build a, a library that makes people solve the bond as easy as do the uh, gradient propagation, like the, 
so many uh, successful framework did. So here we show an example of our uh, auto layer path. So this time the perturbation can be uh, added on both data and even width of the layer. So because there is no difference of our framework uh, to treat the different data points. So we, we treat both x1, x2, x3, x3 and x4 as the independent input nodes of the graph. So we can not only add perturbation on input, we can also add perturbation on the, on the weights. Then we can uh, 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 start, also we need to start from the last node, which is the output node here. And we go through a meter reduce sum operation and got our first A1 here. And also our uh, path will indicate by the, uh, the, the, the blue arrow here. So when we, when we encounter the exponential operation, we still need to do some relaxation. And then uh, we meet addition option. So this, this option is very different in, uh, from the, like in the fit forward neural networks because this operation has two uh, ancestors. So because we need to do a DFS, the deep first search, so we just uh, choose one pass. We just select the first, this, this pass here. And then uh, we encounter a matrix multiplication. And after do some some relaxation, we can uh, go to the A5. So A5 is all, is a linear uh, co coin uh, is, is a linear coin. Uh, uh, sorry, it's, it's a linear function to represent the relationship between x4 and our final output fx. And the, since, since it's not done, because there is another uh, way need we need to go, then we can go to the A6 by relaxation the tiny h function, and also similar here, and the, then this pass go down uh, because we got A8, we got the, our uh, A, mat A, mat A matrix for the X2. And when we want to access the input node, it will be rejected because the input node, input node has a two paths, uh, but we, because we only visit one, one pass, so it will reject our visit. So we go back here, uh, go back to the addition operation, backtrack to the previously unexplored pass. And then we uh, encountered a ralu again, and the matrix multiplication again, and finally we got A11, uh, which represents the relationship between the x3 and our final output. And then this time we can finally visit the x1, uh, which is our input node, and got the A12. Okay, and then the output actually can be bounded by the by, by all the A12, A8, A11, and A5, because we have four different independent input. So we need four different A matrix to build the relationship between them with the, our final output. Okay. And also I want to uh, discuss the layer part versus the gradient from back propagation. So first the time complexity is very similar if we know the pre-activation range. If we do not know, we can also recursively compute them even from the first layer. And the second the layer part can sometimes be seen as a generalized gradient uh, because uh, when there is no perturbation like the third plot here, the bond actually can become the gradient. And once we have the framework, there will be some uh, uh, existing application based on that. The most intuitive one could be the verification on any kinds of structures like the ResNet, uh, dense, uh, DenseNet, LSTM, and even very recent transformers, which has a very complex self-attention layers, but it's, it's all of them are okay for our framework because we ju just uh, treated them as a computational graph. And then because the bound propagation is totally differentiable, so we can also train the, train the bound directly to do the certified defense as a uh, plug-in to the uh, con conventional minimax problem. And we let the neural networks has a larger certified area. So it also indicates the improvement of the robustness. And since we're treated in the neural networks as a computational graph, we also firstly conduct the perturbation analysis on weights of the neural network and a certified training on the weights. So none of the existing frameworks support this. And the results looks here. And we can see the certified trained weights are much more, much more stable, even in, with some perturbation added on the uh, most sensitivity gradient direction. So that can help us on some real world application against noise or accidentally changes on the weights, like the parameter quantization, or sometimes some hardware deploy 
with some noise or, or even set channel attack by malicious users. And moreover, we tried to use the relaxation-based incomplete verifiers to solve the complete verifiers verification by using the branch and bound. Because we know the relaxation is not allowed in the complete, complete verification. So, so the, and relaxation are actually caused by the activation function, which is the ReLU here. So uh, we can, uh, we can, what we can do is, is, is the split unstable neuron to two parts, which is all, always active parts and always inactive parts. And we will ease the relaxation and convert the original problem to two sub problems. And by using the branch and bound iteratively, our auto layer path framework can achieve around uh, uh, 30 times faster than the linear programming, which is LP based uh, method. And also there are some application based on our framework to train the uh, uh, NLP or the even the deep, re deep reinforcement learning models. Okay. And by the way, so our uh, library is uh, totally open source and has around uh, 20,000 lines of code to implement the bound propagation for most uh, existing op operations in, your, in the neural network. And the library is a very convincing benchmark for the future researchers in the verification community to quantify the robustness uh, of their customized models. Okay. And then I will uh, see some uh, future work. Uh, so the first one is the, on the robust, robustness analysis. Because we know actually the incomplete versus the complete verification are a trade-off between the speed and the tightness. But if we can do the complete verification in real time, and it is helps a lot in a very famous application called the uh, collation of avoidance and the detection for the aircrafts. Uh, for example, so if you are a pilot on this air, 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 airplane, and there is a, a, a read, radar that can give you some information about the intruder, like the current altitude, the speed, and the angle towards you. But and on, on your airplane, you have a well-trained neural networks can output the probability of the collision between these two airplanes. Uh, but we know sometimes such information are actually delayed or in, 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 inaccurate. So like the, the, it have a tolerance of the angles like the plus or minus five degrees. So there are actually a, new, a natural perturbation set and the complete verification can give you the yes, no answer of it. So if the answer is yes, then it means there is definitely a combination of the input in such perturbation set can meet the airplane hit. And if the answer is no, then there is no need to worry about the intruder. So the speed of the complete verification can provide more response time to the uh, pilot of the, uh, for the potential collision. And this project can be applied funding from the uh, NSF recently, they have a proposal called namely the formal method in the field. And next, uh, I will keep digging in the real world attack and, attack and defense. And, uh, uh, th th and also we can apply uh, funding from the Department of Transportation. It's very recent. Uh, uh, also very recent funding proposal called namely automated vehicle activities and automated driving systems. So because the real world attack, like the aerosol t-shirt we designed can, uh, you know, rest very much a security concern in the automated driving systems. And finally, I will always uh, keep my mind uh, on collaboration with uh, different disciplines like the model compression and the hard hardware acceleration. It can give us an uh, efficient and hardware friendly model and also medical image analysis, analysis, which can improve the classification result under different noises. And for the non-structured data, like graph data, we can build the robust model in unsupervised or semi-supervised scenarios. And moreover, I'm also very interested in the reliable quantum computing. And I think my background on the uh, formal robustness analysis can help on the stability of quantum com computing. And there are some uh, collaborations I have and I really want to extend my uh, gratefulness to them because the collaboration is always my key point to deliver a, a good quality and high impact research. I will keep the co collaborations with them. Okay, and back to the question. So can we trust AI? Uh, I think the answer so far is, is obscure and leading to the negative because uh, but th th that is the significance for the uh, analysis on the trustworthy machine learning. And people in this field need to think about the problem ahead to avoid some uh, evil influence happening on the AI system. And moreover, another reason I would say is that because it is there, 
the intri intriguing property is there and we are equal to know the reason. Okay, thank you. And that's my presentation. Thank you for attending. And if you have any question to just feel free to ask. We have a few minutes now, so let's go ahead and get started with questions. Uh, whoever has a question, just go right ahead and ask. So none of you have a question. Okay, well, let me ask one question then. Um, in the early part of your presentation, you had something to do where you were talking about the combining the uh, nonlinear constraints and the linear constraints and so on. And then you said the way you were solving it was some kind of splitting method, right? Yes, yes. Uh, branch and bond. Uh, yeah. No, not, not here. No, no. Much earlier. No. The very early part of the presentation. Okay. So uh, we have some... Oh, oh, oh ADMM. Oh, I know. What do, what do yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. Okay. It's around here. Yeah. Just go back to the point where you're actually doing the splitting, right? Okay. Here. Uh, uh, this part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, this one. Correct, uh -huh. correct. Right. 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 Yeah, so what is the intuition behind the splitting thing? Can you just tell me that in simple terms? What what is okay. what are you doing? you're taking here? Yeah. Okay, so so first because the uh, so this term is is a hard constraint, so we cannot directly do the gradient optimization uh, through this objective function, and actually only 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 this red term is differentiable. So we the reason we we use the splitting method is that we can convert the hard constraint. To, we can uh, convert the constraint to the objective function here. And by using some uh, uh, con uh, some hard hard constraint like the uh, delta equals to z by w, because the if delta equals to z by w, then we can we can split the the z y w terms by step by step because all of them are actually together. So in that case, if we like the delta step, if we in the delta step we, we want to solve this uh, Lagrangian problem, if the z y w are all constant. So hold the whole term are only only relative to delta, and because the delta is differentiable, so we can just do the gradient descent. And also in the next step, if we treat the delta as a constant, then the whole term only relate relative to the z by w, and z by w are all have the the closed form solution, because they are just uh, uh, the the soft constraint. They have they can we can do like the uh, soft thresholding or some projection to solve the problem. So. The reason we, we introduce ADI, ADMM here is to help us to solve the problem in a very uh, efficient and uh, convergence uh, better way. Okay. Okay, thank you. Th thank you. Okay, further questions, anybody else in the audience? Okay, then I, then I will ask you another question. Um, to solve these problems that you did in the second half of your presentation, uh, where did you get most of your ideas from? I mean, how did you approach this business of finding? Okay, uh, so uh, ADMM is actually uh, uh, proposed by the uh, Stephen Boyd, which from UC Berkeley. So he's a, uh, a, a fundamental guy in the in the convex optimization. So that's not a, a new problem that's proposed in 2011. Uh, so when we encounter such problems, so it is definitely uh, fit the uh, a, a very uh, typical uh, uh, cr a criteria or typical uh, 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 you know the situation of the AD ADMM need. So ADMM, ADMM usually need to uh, uh, need some uh, is prepared to some objective function which have different terms uh, together, and you cannot so solve, solve them together, but you can either solve them one by one. So that's also similar in our uh, in our in our functions. So, so we, that's the reason we use the ADM. So, so this is also a very famous function, uh, but we just introduced them in, the, uh, in, in, in our paper and firstly try to leverage it to build the, uh, to, to build the adversary example. Yes. Okay. And the, 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 the group sparsity term here, as I introduced here, this is also an added term. So the, the original, uh, uh, attacking problem could be as easy as only solve the first one term. So because we're adding so much term together, so we need also need to find a better way to solve them together. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, Dr. Malnobis, are you back? Yes, I'm back. Okay. And um, sorry, I had to drop off for a bit. Sure. 
but thank you for hosting the seminar. Sure. sure. So uh, is his next step very clear to him? He knows what he's got to do? Yes. yes. Uh, Kaidi, I, I, believe, mm -hmm. I believe that at 4.30, you're going to meet with Dr. Gary Levens, right? Yes, exactly. And it's on the other link, uh, which has been for the interview so far, right? Uh, I, oh, yes, yes, exactly. OK, good. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, of course, Cherry will be there at 4.30, but I will also be there to make sure that you have no problem at that time. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. And uh, so I think with that, uh, if it's okay with Dr. Lobo and everybody else, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, we'll, we'll pick it up uh, on the other link. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.